Hi folks, David Waring and Mark Prosser again here with Learn Bonds and our weekly $200 billion worth of bond advice where we talk about everything PIMCO. Uh, Mark, the first thing we have this week, uh, as always, is a video clip from a Bill Gross interview, so I thought we'd jump right in with that. Awesome. Well, what you, do you Andy. think the Fed is thinking and feeling about the economy right now, and do you agree? Well, I think the Fed is looking at a slow economy, perhaps 1% to 2% real growth, Mandy, and I think at this meeting, you know, that many members are uh, trying to agree on a rule-based approach uh, that differs a little bit from an inflation target at 2% and differs a little bit from lowering unemployment. They want to put a number on it. I don't know if we're going to see that in terms of today's statement, but I think at some point going forward we're going to see a nominal GDP target of 4 to 5%, and that would be a, a reflationary aspect to, uh, to Fed policy. Okay, so actually a pretty bold statement there. I know we've heard some things about this, but it hasn't gotten as much coverage as I would have thought, and that's that you know maybe the Fed is going to add in a nominal GDP target instead of just inflation and unemployment. Your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts is exactly what Bill Gross said, is this is inflationary. Um, essentially, by introducing a new target, they're saying don't focus on the old target. And the old target uh, you know, has traditionally been the dual mandate, um, you know, low unemployment, um, and uh, low inflation. Well, it sounds like you know, low inflation may actually be taking uh, a back seat. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it definitely sounds like that, and I, I think this is, you know, um, it's interesting because I'm not sure what else the Fed can do than what they've already done uh, in terms of all the asset buying and the quantitative easing and everything, but I guess this would untie their hands even more if inflation picked up, uh, and also I think going forward it might give them some more flexibility to uh, drop rates faster if they feel like uh, the economy is going into recession because prices don't tend to react as fast as the economy slows. So. That interesting point. Um, also, it's a, you know unemployment. They've taken tremendous amounts of action. Uh, they've used almost every tool in their toolkit, um, and unemployment hasn't budged. So I think maybe are they trying to choose a target which is easier for them to say mission accomplished on? I don't know. How do you think the market's going to react if they do announce this new target uh, in their December meeting? Uh, I think the stock market is going to uh, uh, rejoice, and I think the bond market and, and bond prices uh, you know, may significantly be hurt. Okay, got it. All right, so the next uh, piece of PIMCO press or, or information from this week uh, is that PIMCO is actually soured on financial bonds, which is interesting because they were pretty big on them not too long ago, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the last uh, monthly market commentary for the PIMCO funds, uh, you know, talked about how they liked uh, corp high, you know, high quality, um, you know, senior um, corporate financial bonds. And now, you know, in a piece in Bloomberg, they basically said, you know, uh, the good times are going to, uh, are almost over. And what they really pointed out was, you know, there's almost a 2% spread between uh, similar rated uh, industrial or non-financial corporate bonds and, uh, and financials, you know, i.e. on one side, let's say DuPont Chemicals, on the other side, maybe a Citigroup. Now that spread's really compressed to like about a third of a percent. So really, there's very little difference now between financials and non-financials. And so really, how much further can compress? Um, now normally, I mean, we've written articles on this, that financial bonds, the difference between, let's say, a uh, single A financial and single A industrial is that when things go bad, even for similar rated bonds, the financials nosedive. There's a much slower process. So really what you're paying for with, with, uh, with a non-financial bond, you're, you're getting less yield because there's more time to get out of the position and uh, it's more you know, financial crash and burn. Uh, but now there's really very little difference in yields, so if there's very little difference in yields, uh, you're not getting paid for that extra risk. That's right, and if financial bonds crash, you wrote about this, there's actually no assets to, uh, to recover anything on where an industrial company, if they go out of business, there's the factories and the land and all those types of things, so that is interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next on the list is uh, PIMCO says investors to focus on, uh, focus on Asian bonds uh, on rate cuts. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, this is about currency wars. I mean, that, that, that uh, phrase has come into vogue rate lately. And uh, you know, essentially, ironically, you know, it used to be everyone wanted to have the most stable, most uh, strongest currency. 
Uh, these days, that isn't the case. Right. You know, you race to the bottom. Well, well, right, race to the bottom because the less valuable your currency is, the more you're going to export. The more you export, the better your economy is. Uh, and since mankind has become export driven, uh, everyone wants to have a weak currency, not a strong currency. And so, what basically uh, a senior PIMCO executive was saying was very simply is that you know the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar has really appreciated. Why? Because they're keeping their you know their uh, their interest rates, their their you know their equivalent of the Fed funds rate at you know you know high two mid three percent range. Well, if you're paying that much for money, um, you know your currency is going to appreciate when everyone else is paying less than a percent. So PIMCO is predicting those countries will have to lower their interest rates. Uh, in order to uh, promote exports. Gotcha. Um, that's very interesting. So uh, you think uh, any, any Chinese bonds or Asian bonds that the individual investor can buy? Well, PIMCO is actually uh, not bullish on China. Ah, gotcha. okay. They are specifically to mention Australia and New Zealand. Okay, gotcha. All right, so uh, on to Twitter, um, where there was lots of uh, tweets by Bill Gross this week. My favorite was uh, Bill Gross says, Fed merry-go-round. Inflate stocks till 2000, then inflate housing till 2007, then inflate stocks till 2012, now inflate housing again. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that, Mark? Uh, well, you know, he's bullish on housing, he's bullish on gold, and, and you know, he's consistent. Yeah, and it, uh, where does it go after, where's the next stop on the merry-go-round, assuming uh, housing gets reflated? To be honest, I don't know. How, do you have an idea? Uh, well, I mean, it seems like uh, treasuries are already about as high as they could go. Um, uh, it, it's it's tough. I guess probably next thing is is the currencies really start to uh, to sell off. It would be the next uh, most logical stop. Okay, so we've got a dollar bear here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So next on the list is um, on November seventh. A Romney victory, good for stocks, bad for bonds, Obama vice versa, long term, not much difference. Structural headwinds dominate. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. I mean, I mean, Bill Gross has said repeatedly, we've got a six, not a $15 trillion deficit, but we've got a $16 trillion worth of uh, future obligations. Uh, Democrat, Republican, he doesn't really think that matters much in terms of the long term, you know, that the U.S. has too much debt. Uh, in the short term, of course, the market reacts, and his job as a as a portfolio manager is to actually trade the short term with a long term view. So, so he does have a short term view, which is you know for bonds, since we're in bonds, it is you know uh, you know Romney would be not so good for the bond market. Yeah, that's interesting, I, I, and I, always, I also thought it was interesting because a lot of people are saying that Romney may uh, introduce a more hawkish chairman to the Fed, and you would think that that would be bad for stocks, but apparently Bill Gross uh, feels otherwise. Well, there's a lot of confusion about the Romney's uh, Fed uh, potential nominees. There's three of them. One is uh, uh, Glenn Hubbard, who has recently said he doesn't want the job, he wants to be head of the Treasury. There's uh, McCow, who we've written about, who I'm probably terribly mispronouncing his name, <laughs> Greg McCow, uh, you know, who actually agrees with, uh, with Bernanke's policies. And then there's uh, Taylor, who's the only one who's really come on the record saying these QV3 things are a bad idea. So even if Romney was elected, and you know, it's not clear that the next Fed chairman would be uh, all that different. Yeah, and that's what Bill Gross said later on in that interview we looked at earlier, is that the Republicans actually don't have a track record of uh, electing hawkish uh, Fed governors. So uh, Really, there hasn't been one since Volcker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and let's see, Volcker was there in the early 80s. Yeah. So we're really looking about 30 years you know, uh, since the last hawk. And it seems like we've seen the effects of that from a monetary policy and bubble standpoint. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, anything else to discuss for this week? Uh, no, I think we've uh, covered it. Okay, great. That's this week's $200 billion worth of bond advice. We'll look forward to seeing you again next week, and thanks for watching.